in a dark time when hope was bleak there lived a young girl whose only escape was in a legend that wanted her back Guillermo del Toro's wonderfully creepy Pan's Labyrinth tells the story of a young girl named Ophelia who uses her imagination and love of fantasy novels to get through the trauma of the Spanish Civil War. Del Toro has been enamored by gothic horror and fairy tales since early childhood, and he decided to make this film as a tribute to all the monsters and creatures who got him through his toughest times, as well as fulfilling a lifelong desire to create his own fairy tale. A child of the 1960s, he was also inspired by surrealist painters Pablo Picasso and Salvador Dali, who also used their work to poke fun at the Franco era. I love creatures. I love monsters. I need monsters. I need creatures. I need fabrication. I don't like recreating a world. I like to create a world. It's very boring for me to recreate a world. I, I think that it needs to have a level of drama in the settings and a level of drama in the lighting and a level of drama in the design of the thing to be interesting for me. Specifically, Del Toro was drawn to a lucid dream he once had as a child, where every night at midnight, a large fawn or goat would poke its head from behind a grandfather clock. And he, he comes up with characters that he just loves. and. What happens is a lot, one of them often comes out tall and thin. He likes he likes that long, lithe, sort of, you know, spindly thing. Only in this case, Ophelia and the audience take Del Toro's place in this two-hour-long lucid dream we like to call a movie. This, other creatures from his imagination, his strict Catholic upbringing, along with Del Toro's mastery of characters, color, narrative, and technical elements, are all woven together to create what he calls the perfectly disobedient fairy tale. Exposition of things, you know, the surrealists, for example, do that. The idea that uh, something, a Magritte, a Magritte painting, you have a guy in a former English wear with a bowler hat and an apple for a face. And that element, that sort of juxtaposition of things is what creates art, I believe. The film is all about the two sides of Franco, the human and the beast, or in Del Toro's words, beauty and the beast. Del Toro uses Captain Vidal as a human embodiment of Franco, a military man obsessed with the grooming of good Catholic youths. He reproaches Ophelia for shaking with her left hand instead of her right, and for not saluting him in a greeting. It's la otra mano. Ophelia. This is after he scolds her mother for skipping church, being tardy, and not teaching her better. An allusion to Franco's regime having mothers being an important aspect in instilling his ultra-Catholic values. He invites her mother to a last supper of sorts, in which he literally plays God by offering wine, thanking his brothers, and even invites a priest to bless the food while having the only woman around serve the food and keep quiet. He proceeds to give a speech about how he must leave soon as he feels someone at the table has betrayed him. Somos todos iguales, pero hay una gran diferencia, que la guerra terminó y ganamos nosotros. Del Toro's idea of a disobedient fairy tale comes into play in the middle of the film where Ophelia travels to the underworld, her fantasy world, to complete her first task given to her by the fawn. It is in this mirrored scenario of the previous scene that Ophelia takes over the role of her mother. She wears the same green dress that she wears earlier, only in contrast, is more disobedient. Unlike a real princess, she eats the food at the table even though the fawn warns her against it, she steals the pale man's belongings and disrupts all kinds of order. The pale man represents the violent side of Franco. It copies Vidal's exact movements, sits at the head of a very long dinner table like Vidal does earlier, 
keeps a watchful eye on everybody at the dinner table and is completely blinded by his grotesque features. Ophelia's fantasy world is bright and colorful, filled with amber, gold, orange, and red hues, and very fluid, bouncy 3D cinematography and rounded creatures. It represents a place for Ophelia to escape into the happiness of her childhood memories. Though, as Del Toro claims, this is not entirely the case, as grotesque themes remain throughout. <laughs> I think it's not an escape, it's a place you go to to have uh, almost time for yourself. The real world is bleak and dark colored with sharp jaggy camera angles and cuts to emphasize the violence of it. Del Toro cross-contaminates these worlds by constantly having Ophelia travel back and forth between the two. This creates a contamination because you're combining harsh reality of the real world with the peaceful bliss of the fantasy world. He also combines technical elements, such as color and shapes, such as circles, and jagged features, from a maze-shaped blocky square set to the fawn's curly, rounded, circular horns, and literally having human blood drip into the rippled, circular, and dark-colored layer of pan. After which, Vidal, at the end of the film, will chase his daughter into the world where Ophelia will comfortably pass away into her mother's arms. It's not definitely a happy place. It's a, it's a painful, creepy, dark place, but it is your own place. Religious references, such as small amounts of light with darkness, create a bridge between heaven and hell. Ophelia's dress at the end of the film is a nod to the Sacred Heart of Jesus painting, literally sitting at the right hand of her father as she dies in the heaven to which he rightfully rules. Y se dice que la princesa descendió al reino de su padre, justicia y bondad, por muchos siglos, que fue amada por sus súbditos, y que dejó detrás de sí pequeñas huellas de su paso por el mundo, visibles solo para aquel que sepa dónde mirar. Del Toro's film was critically acclaimed, winning three Oscars, and it remains one of the highest rated fantasy films of all time. Del Toro creates a modern type of fairy tale being able to humanize humanity while humanizing the monsters. This is the reason why the film is not only a visual spectacular showdown, but an emotionally relevant film that still sticks with us today. A filmmaker that can make you feel something and not just dazzle your eyes, uh, but can work your heart as well, that's going to be a successful filmmaker and that's why he is.